Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So I went to a craft show and I want to show you what I got. I'm going to share prices with you as well and then I'm going to do some projects using these things. These things were all wants, not needs, and I felt like I want to treat myself. I haven't been to this craft show since 2019, so I just wanted to have a little fun. Okay, let me show you what I've got. The first thing on the agenda is this all-purpose art glue. And I've never used it before and they must have really good uh, marketing or packaging because it reminded me of the art glitter glue that we all know and love or most of us. This glue is absolutely amazing. It dries very, very quick, dries clear and glues anything to anything. So when I saw these bottles, I thought perhaps it's a cheaper version of this glue. So I'm going to give it a go and see how I feel about it. And that costs $8.99. All of the prices are in Australian dollars. I'll try today so that we can see how it works. These envelopes, even though I don't really need any more envelopes, they were too nice to pass them by and they cost $3 each, like $3 a pack. And they're really beautiful gold, shiny, or it's not shiny. I forgot what, I, what word I'm looking for, but... I think you know what I mean. Anyway, I saw these and I thought I have to get them. Next thing I got are these embossing folders and I've been wanting to get some embossing folders but I never want to pay the price, the full price I guess. And these were on sale, they were $5 each. And yes, they are like, this is a Christmas one and this one, this one is not a Christmas one but that's good. So I don't plan to use this on Christmas only. I plan to use it today so we can see how it looks when it embosses some cardstock and I'm going to use this all year round. It really doesn't bother me that it says Christmas on it. It doesn't have any Christmassy recognizable features I guess. And then this one, this looks really quite nice. And straight away I'm thinking for this size, if you've seen my video on napkin decoupage I did just recently. Just use some de uh, napkins on, on file folder and, you know, decoupage on top. I wonder if this is going to fit in there. It's not perfect size, but I could still... Perfect! I could emboss that. It's going to make it look even nicer. I think that's going to look good. I'm going to have to give it a try. I'm, I'm just looking at the packaging now. I've never tried this technique where you emboss and then paint over the top and then maybe sand those raised areas. That's something I'm really going to have to try. Might try today if I have time. Okay, I've been dying to get this thing out, so out it comes. I'll tell you how much this thing costs in a moment, but I just want to show you what it is. All of these images that you see are die cuts that I can very easily just... Is it very easily? It is. It's quite easily. I can just get it out of there and use it on my project. Now these images are most definitely the type of images that I have never used before. I don't know what you would call this particular type of art. It's very quirky and, and eclectic and I'm drawn to it, but I've never used these colors in my journals or in my projects, but they're just so amazing. And these are still all punch outs and that really is mainly what drew me to it and of course all of these beautiful images you get two of the same pretty cool just having like one of these images on a project will brighten it up so much and there's so many pages and then when we get towards the end these are still they're all all of these ones i'm showing they're all die cuts of punch out shapes look at this art supplies oh look scissors oh wow look at these houses that's like very similar to that video i did recently on using up paper scraps to make art houses i'll link the video down below so i did spend quite a bit of time thinking if i should get this book and i'll tell you why in a moment so at the back over here these last few pages i think perhaps it's about 10 pages they are just pages like these that you can you know art journal pages that you can cut up oh i did that in the past as well paint swatches and uh you know look at this absolutely beautiful so this book it's mainly those die cut shapes and then these last few pages perhaps about 10 pages are these types of pages 
And the reason it took me quite a long time to decide if I wanted to buy this book is because of the price. I thought, can I justify paying $38 for something that I don't really need, but I want really, really badly? And I decided, yes, it's definitely worth it. And there's a whole lot of images in here that I, I will definitely be using for the next three years, probably. And I've never actually heard of this brand before. I mean, I don't go out and buy a lot of things, as you know, but Art by Marlene, I'm not sure if it's been around for a while and I've just been unaware, but there we have it. I really like, really like this purchase. Next thing I got after this many years that I've been crafting is a tear ruler. Even though I made my own and I've been using this one for years and I show you how to make this ruler in my video. Frequently asked questions because people have asked me how to make their tear rulers. So anyway, I have one, but once again, like I said, I want, not a need. And when I saw this and it cost $10, it's not cheap. Like it's not, you know, if it was $2, it would be cheap. Uh, but I, I bought it. Maybe a tiny little bit of regret, but not too much. Let's see how it looks. I like it. Let's see how it's different to my handmade one. There we go. Not much difference. So maybe a little bit more regret I feel now. This is the purchased one and this is the handmade one. I can't really see much difference. So I'm just gonna try this side as well and see if that makes any difference. Oh yeah, okay. It's not too bad. Okay, perhaps I'm feeling a little bit of regret at buying this ruler, but not a lot. No, I'm, I'm happy that I bought it. I've wanted it for years. I'm talking like seven years and I never wanted to spend the money on something that I can make myself. And finally I went ahead and bought it and I'm not gonna, gonna regret it. Okay, next thing I got are these. It's called a four pillar ribbon frame and it's actually a bow maker. I only bought it because it really isn't expensive at all. This is a little tool that you can very easily make at home and I was planning to make one at home. I just never got around to it and I keep wanting to do it and I never got around to it. And when I saw this for $5, I decided to grab it. I'm going to try this out in the video today. Next thing I got is, you know, I'm just going to go through this real quick. It's these inks that I kind of used to death really until they can't be used no more. And the ones that I have currently, I don't even remember how old they are. And they barely have any ink in them. You can't even see the top of it anymore. And it really was time to replenish. So I got this Distress Oxide ink. I don't know what this one is going to be like. Grand Espresso. And then in this stays on brand, I got the brown and I use mostly brown in my projects. I mean, when I'm inking the edges of pages, I always go for brown. So I got this one. And now these two here, these are really, really good inks. I find anyway, and I got two. I got this watering can gray color and a black color. They're acid free, permanent and waterproof. And the reason why I love these is because they don't bleed if you go over a wet medium. Like if you stamp on a page, go over it with some watercolor or even glue, it's not gonna bleed. Whereas these ones, they are not waterproof, so they do smudge. That's not a problem for inking the edges of pages, but for stamped images, especially on fabric, if I'm stamping on fabric and I want to glue the piece of fabric onto something, the glue might seep through to the stamped image and it might make it smudge. It's happened to me before, so that's why I like these. And they weren't too expensive, they were $10 each. Moving along, I got this ink blending tool. I want to see how it's going to differ from the ones that I'm currently using. So these are also very old three, four, five years perhaps, and I haven't changed these pads at all in all that time. And so now what I'm finding is that when I'm inking, little bits of it are falling off. You can see, or well, maybe you can't see, but like little, little bits of sponge fall off like there and smudge my page. So that's why I thought I'll get a new one and I thought I'll go with this one because it's bigger and maybe it'll come a bigger I don't know, I haven't tried them. I'm gonna try them today, this bigger size and see how I like it. Next thing I got are these two. So this one is a gloss spray and I've already used it and it cost about $9, I think it was, I'm not 100% sure. And it's a gold spray and 
this is something that I will be buying over and over again. It's by Ranger and I will show you what I've done. You may have seen this in my previous video, this altered puzzle piece. And you can see these little speckles of gold color. That's this. I've also used it on some other projects, but I'm not going to show you now because that will be in my next video. But this is just such a beautiful thing to have. And perhaps you can make your own if you mix some acrylic really beautiful gold paint like this one I'm going to show you next with water and then use that to spray but you have to make sure that you clean this really well after each use so perhaps it is something that I could have made but I'm glad that I bought it there's a lot of things that I want to make and do and I don't actually have time to do it so sometimes it's just easier to buy the thing providing it's not too expensive this here is an absolutely beautiful gold paint that I simply could not put down. It looks absolutely divine. Look at it. And I'm not 100% sure on the price. It could have been $8.95 or let's just round it off to $9 or $7. One of the two I think it was, but I can't remember what. And then this. This is definitely an indulgent purchase. It cost $30 and I spent quite a bit of time thinking if I should get it. And the packaging looks really old and it looks like it's been marked down a few times and nobody's purchasing it. But in the end, I totally caved and I purchased it. I'll show you what it is. I think it might be a card making kit, I guess. These here, the first page, they look like little vellum butterfly die cuts or punch out shapes. Oh, I like this. Same thing over here. Once again, those shapes and I love butterflies. Not in real life, not a big fan of butterflies in real life. I know that might be strange, but I love them in crafting. Okay, this is upside down. Let's go this way. So I think what really drew me to this pack are these pieces here. And I think there's eight of these pieces. And oh, there's more. Oh, that's really exciting. There's quite a few of those. And then there's the smaller ones. These are square ones. So I'm not sure, like I'm not a card maker and I wouldn't use this to make cards, but I can definitely use a lot of these. And then, oh, these would look beautiful as name plates and things on journals, like embellishing the front of journals or mini notebooks. So I'm quite happy with that. So far, I am not regretting purchasing these. And then of course these, oh, look how beautiful. A whole page of these beautiful embellishments, two pages of, oh, and then some embossed paper. And then what are these? Again, same thing. I really don't know what these numbers mean. 3A, 3D, 3B. I have no idea. If anyone knows, let me know. They all have, seem to have numbers. I'm probably not going to use these in the intended way anyway, if the intention was to make cards with them. And then cardstock. This is all uh, shiny and smooth cardstock. Not bad. And then vellum pieces. And these are all the vellum pieces and they correspond to that cardstock that I've just shown you. And then these are all vellum sheets and they all also have this, the numbers. All of these vellum sheets have those numbers. So I assume, see 2C here, 2C here, but I don't know what am I supposed to do. Maybe I'm, oh, maybe this is designed for me to put those foam stickers or something underneath to make them like a layered piece. So all up in this pack, there's 40 sheets of all of these different things. And the original price was $40, which would mean that this is $1 a sheet. And I think that's a little bit too expensive, but I paid $30. And it truly seems like something that they had sitting on a shelf for ages that nobody was buying. So I love it, to be honest, and I don't regret spending $30 on it. And I think I can make a whole lot of fun things with it. I just wish... I'm going to have to Google this, but I wish there was an example on, on how exactly you're supposed to use them. I don't really re regret any of the things that I purchased. Some were more necessary than others, like that tear ruler, probably not a necessary purchase. But anyway, if I had the option on going and returning this right now, I wouldn't. So I guess that makes it mean that I'm happy that I bought it. Okay, now I think I'm going to do a little project using, I'm not sure what to, what to start with. Maybe I'll do something with this pack. I'll speed everything up. Well, not everything, but anyway, let's, let's get started. 
I might try and use only the things that I purchased today. So the first thing I'm going to do is emboss this envelope using my Christmassy thing. And here we go. These are the two dies. I mean the two embossing folders. I don't know. Does that look Christmassy? Like would you take this envelope and think Christmas? I personally, I wouldn't. So, and then this is the other one. I never know what I should put on the front. Should the raised bits be on the front? That's the way I always think I should do it. But I actually prefer the look of this side. Okay, I'm going to try this blending tool now. Let's see. The inking process definitely seems quicker with this. I don't know if it's because the ink is really good or as in I don't have to keep doing this to get more ink on there. Or is it because this sponge is bigger and better? I'm not sure. Just going back to my own ink ink blender tool because I just want brown on here on these raised edges raised embossed bits just to make it stand out a bit more I guess and I'll leave this one as is because I really love that color and everything so I don't think I'm gonna ink it at all now let's see what are we having here I'm gonna be honest now, I'm pulling these things out and I'm feeling guilt. I feel like this needs to be hoarded for a period of time before I actually start using it. So I'm feeling stingy, I feel like I don't wanna use this. I just wanna cherish it. As hard as it is, I'm gonna keep going. If I wasn't just kind of using what I got today, I probably wouldn't have put these houses on the envelope, but I would use them in different types of project because it kind of this it's quite eclectic, isn't it? And whereas this is kind of more vintage, a vintagey feel, so it fl clashes a little bit. I don't know. What, do you feel like it clashes a little bit? I'm not entirely sure, and I feel like I need something up here now. What do you think? I'm, I'm going to go with that and I'm going to pretend they're like eclectic clouds in the sky above the houses. And I just saw this house. Look at this house. And this one here. So cool. I wish I'd seen this before I did those art houses on my channel. I would have gotten lots of ideas. Now I'm going to test out this glue. I'll spit it all up and I'll let you know. I will know straight away how it compares to the one and only at glitter glue maybe it's not the one and only we shall soon find out and now i'm feeling all sorts of feelings about using this one as well i feel like do i really need to use this glue to glue these pieces on can i just use my cheapo cheapest glue that i have but i just want to test this out so here we go moment of truth i like the application very easy and you know nice narrow tip a little bit of glue comes out let's see Okay, so far so good. I realized that I want to move this a little bit more in. They're kind of too far apart. And even though I've just glued it down literally a few seconds ago, I can't, it's not letting me slide it over. But I wonder if I pick it up. Ooh, it's definitely drying very, very quick. So quick, in fact, that I have to add more glue. Okay, so here are my two envelopes. Just leaving it nice and simple and elegant in love with those houses, in love with this glue. It's definitely cheaper than the art glitter glue, which I also absolutely love. I just don't love the price of it. So I'm hoping that this cheaper one is going to do just as good a job. Couture Creations is the brand of this original all-purpose art glue. Okay, well, there we go. I'm gonna give this little gadget a quick try. I'm just gonna try with the single one first because you can have like a double bow using all four of these rod things. So I'm just randomly cutting a piece of ribbon. It's not really telling me how much I need. This goes like this. I'm just looking at my instructions over here. This one goes underneath. Oh, I don't know if I did this right. Mm, I think I did. Very nice probably use too much ribbon here but that's looking really nice and it's not going anywhere you know usually when you make a bow with your hands and you pull on a piece it kind of you have to kind of keep maneuvering it to look good this just stays look I'm pulling on this look it's not going anywhere see I don't know how but it looks like a perfect little bow I'm going to try the double, even though there's no instructions for the double. I'm just going to try and work it out. Oh, 
All right, I will definitely have to see a tutorial on making the double bow because didn't, this didn't quite go as well as, you know, it's not looking perfect. So I definitely went wrong somewhere, but it's looking much better than anything that I could make just with my fingers. So this was definitely worth the $5 that I paid 100%. And the best thing is you really can make this at home, but if you have been planning to do it for years and never gotten around to it like i have perhaps it's time to buy what's it called the four pillar ribbon frame from oh again couture creations same brand as this and i'm not these i'm not promoting anything here i, I paid for all of this myself and i've never even heard of that brand before so there you go I think I'm going to do a quick little project with this and I'm going to try and work out how it's supposed to be used and come up with a little something and show you what I've done. And here's what I've got so far. So a pretty little journal cover and I used all of those die cut pieces and things like that. The only thing that I added is this piece, this embossed piece that I had in my own stash. And that just helped these butterflies uh, be more visible on this background that was very, very busy. They were kind of getting lost. So that's why I added that under there. And that's looking quite nice. So now what I'm going to do is add pages and bind it in and make a journal. I'm just doing a three hole pamphlet stitch and using embroidery floss to bind. And here we go. So I have nine folded pages in there. The first page is this vellum page and the nine folded pages give me 36 pages. So 36 sides. And now all that's left to do is a little bit of embellishing on the inside of the journal. Okay, and journal is embellished. I'm going to show you what I did. I only used things that were in this pack and this book over here. Okay, let me show you what I did. All right, so you've seen the cover and then on the inside, the first page is a vellum page. And then I clipped in that envelope that I did earlier in the video. Over here, I just glued down this Be Silly, Be Honest, Be Brave. And that's from that eclectic book. And then over here, I glued one of the die cut pieces and I actually cut up one of these cardstock pieces, the same kind of piece that I used for the cover. I cut it up and made embellishments for inside of the journal and I used up the whole sheet. You will see as we go, go along. Here's another piece from that cardstock. This is a journaling spot and this is a die cut from the eclectic book. Over here, I used this gloss spray glossy acrylic spray it most definitely looks much better on dark paper or black paper rather than tea dyed paper but you can still see that gold speckle kind of effect on the page it's not bad okay over here another piece from that cardstock that i cut off and i just kind of glued just in there and then that's that it behaves like a tuck spot like that and this is from the eclectic book the heart middle of the signature or journal over here i had this leftover piece you'll see from i'll show you in the end what that's from and I, it's a tuck spot as well just a little die cut here on the bottom and i've tucked in this envelope i really wanted this to be like a pocket on a page and then you can have stuff in there and stuff at the back but it's kind of slightly just slightly too big so i just decided to clip it in this way and then over here, these corners are actually, we're nearly at the end. At the back here, I made this pocket. And you see how I cut up that tri triangle here? That's where the triangle lives now. So I'm not, uh, I actually used up the whole sheet. And the only things that are left over are these two pieces. And I, I can use them as well and then in that pocket is this large tag and then these corners that are cut off from that piece of cardstock is what I glued here to embellish this page so really quite minimal embellishing there's a kind of a theme throughout we're using the same type of thing so that always helps 
And then it was a little bit difficult to tie in these uh, eclectic pieces, but I really used minimal, and I think that the ones that I used go quite nice with the overall, uh, what would you call this look, shabby chic type of a look. So in conclusion, I think everything that I got is well worth the money, especially this bow maker. Absolutely love it for $5. Love the envelopes. Definitely love this book. Even though it was $38, it was well worth it in my opinion, as well as this pack. This pack, who knows, it's probably not available because judging by the packaging, it seems like it was, you can't see in the video, but it seems like this was sitting there for years and nobody was buying it. I mean, I could be wrong, but in any case, the, the only thing I'm not happy with is this thing. Let me tell you. I've been using these round ones for years and they've only just recently started flaking, whereas this one is doing it already. So when I'm inking the edges, all these little pieces of sponge are falling on my table and those pieces of sponge that are falling on the table have ink on them. So what happens is if I put my project on it accidentally, it's going to smudge my pages and stuff so I'm really I don't know if I'm doing something wrong but I am not happy with this at all I'm not sure maybe they're two different brands this one could be oh, okay so this one is probably Tim Holtz or Ranger I'm not sure whereas this one is just a you can see what the brand is I don't know so I don't know maybe I'm not using it correctly or what I'm not sure but I'm not happy with that the only thing I didn't try today is this beautiful gold paint and I'm definitely going to use it and share it with you in upcoming videos. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!